Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media, and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. With Father's Day coming up, I thought I would spend a little time today in today's episode to talk about our relationship with God, how God views us. God is our friend and our father. So I'm going to have a quiz and then I'm going to talk about how the Lord wants to be a friend, a companion. So before we get into today's episode, I would ask that if you're enjoying these principles that I've been sharing, would you consider picking up one of my books on Amazon? If you've been listening to my podcast, you know I have two devotional books, one called Sheep Hear His Voice and one called Insights into Faith, a workbook also called Life Without Baggage, that will help you find greater emotional freedom and peace, a Bible study, and two books that will help you with personal coping and understanding distortions and understanding yourself. So consider picking up one of those for yourself or a friend. So let's get into today's episode. So the principles I'm going to share with you today come out of my book, Correcting Distortions in Your View of God. If you're watching this on video, I'm going to uh, put up slides that show the quiz and different scriptures. If you're just listening, I'll go slow so that you can follow along. I like to start with the quiz sometimes. So here's the quiz. And this is from page 40 in my book, Correcting Distortions. These are true or false. Try to be as honest as you can. Don't think too hard. It's important that I work hard to please God. Number two, God is easily disappointed in me. Number three, I can count on my church, pastor, priest to explain God to me. Number four, praying in my car or listening to messages on the radio are great ways to stay connected to God. Number five, I should keep telling God how sorry I am for a sin. Number six, suffering and tragedy are things God sends to make me stronger. Number seven, when I feel tormented about a sin, that's from God. Number eight, since God will forgive me later, it's okay if I do things now that I know are wrong. So the answer to all of those is false. We don't have to work hard to please God. He loves us. If we choose to obey, we will be blessed but the amount of interest and love that God has for us doesn't change. A healthy parent is like that. God is easily disappointed in me. Again, the answer to that is false. He is not easily disappointed. We may easily <laughs> disappoint ourselves, but I don't think God is very surprised when we mess up. If you have children, you know what their flaws are. You love them. You encourage them to do well, to make good choices. Uh, but usually you're not going to be horribly surprised. They have tendencies, you know, they're people. They have tendencies just like the rest of us. I can count on my church or pastor or priest to explain God to me. Uh, technically, that's false. Uh, we are really supposed to have our own relationship with God. The icing on the cake is what we learn at church, and that is important. But in between church services, 
It's up to us to build our own connection with God and to learn how to read the Bible to understand our faith for ourselves. It's sort of like, you know, when a person is a baby, you feed them a bottle, but at some age, it's appropriate for them to learn to feed themselves. Likewise, our faith should not be dependent on what our religious leader or instructor is telling us. We need to learn how to feed ourselves. Number four, praying in my car or listening to messages are great ways to stay connected to God. Uh, I said that was false because a lot of the people I talk to, all the time they spend with God is multitasking. They don't ever spend time just praying quietly, reading the Bible, meditating on the word of God. It's always a multitask. They're driving to work or whatever. Now, if you stay connected to God during the day after spending quality time with him, that would be good. But uh, I find most people don't really do that. I think I cited the study from 2020 that says only 16% of people in North America are reading the Bible on a consistent basis. So you won't really know God very well. You won't be cultivating that friendship if you're not spending time with him. So I have numerous scriptures that explain why these are false. And I will post these if you're watching the video episode. I should keep telling God how sorry I am. No, once is enough. Sick suffering and tragedy are things God sends to make me stronger. My understanding is that suffering is not from God. Suffering is part of living on earth, but God doesn't send it to make you stronger. Uh, that's why there is no suffering in heaven. Uh, it, it doesn't come from God, and that's why there isn't any in heaven. Number seven, when I feel tormented about a sin, that is from God. No, that's not true. Most likely that comes from harsh parenting where you weren't forgiven. You were given the silent treatment. And then we expect that uh, we have to keep saying, I'm sorry. And chances are you do that with people too, not just God, if that is one of your difficulties, one of your challenges. We all have stuff wrong with us. So um, don't get discouraged. These are common mistakes and distortions. Since God will forgive me, it's okay if I do things now that I know are wrong. Well, that's not really a good attitude, just like if your teenager knows that uh, they're going to lose their keys if they violate curfew, you know, uh, it's not a good decision. So if we have the attitude that it's okay if we sin, there's still consequences for sin. It doesn't mean that God is mad at us. But if you break the law, even if you break man's law, there are consequences. So those are some common distortions I hear all the time. I will post something that shows uh, the scriptures that explain why those items are false. So let's spend the rest of the time talking about how the Lord desires friends. He desires friendship. So this is, uh, the quiz was page 40. This is page 41. And I'm just going to read some of this. I had been raised in a church where God seemed angry, demanding, and eager to send people to hell. There were lots of rules, and I did try to follow them, but I never felt connected to God. But Jesus says in John chapter 10, I'm the good shepherd who lays down my life as a sacrifice for the sheep. After I was introduced to the idea that I could have a personal connection to God because Jesus paid for my sin, I started looking at what Jesus said about himself. Jesus compares himself to a shepherd. A shepherd cares for the sheep. He protects them from wolves. He knows each one individually and sees what they need at the end of each day. A good shepherd will put himself in harm's way to save the sheep. He speaks to them, sings to them, and leads them to peaceful places to rest. God is committed to my well-being. And you can see this in Psalm 23, if that is a, a new thought to you. Unlike friending or following a person on social media that you may not even know, 
Jesus looks for people that he can share his thoughts and even his secrets. Jesus wants us to be his friends, not his slaves. We find that in John chapter 15, and there's a verse in Psalm 25, 14 that says, the secret of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he will make them know his covenant. We, we're not accustomed to thinking of God as friendly. Many see God as distant, angry, or hard to please. And we may think of this in spite of the fact that God invites us to approach him with boldness. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So, let me take a moment to say, if you had a distant father, an angry father, a detached father, then the idea of God being interested in you as a person, of wanting your best, of, of being willing to sacrifice for you, as opposed to just demanding, these are very foreign concepts. So if you have difficulty with this, the way that you can help yourself is one thing is you can focus more on Jesus. Many people find it easier to focus on Jesus, to connect with God when they try to think about connecting to God as father. If they have a lot of really ugly things in their background, that that might really be an obstacle. So it's OK to focus on Jesus and to draw closer to God through Jesus. Also, there may even be a fear that if you let God too close to you, that he's going to clamp down on you, punish you, hurt you, say horrible things to you if you tried to read the Bible. That might sound crazy to you, but I hear this all the time, that uh, when people read the Bible, they tend to see like the worst possible interpretation of what that scripture is saying, and it's based on the fact that they were harshly criticized, rejected, uh, treated severely when they made a mistake. And so it can be very difficult for people to recognize that these emotional obstacles are not from God. People put those in the way, but those obstacles are not from God. He's gentle. He welcomes us. So our broken lens of bad experience, we talked about how experiences um, influence our expectations last week, make it hard to receive the love and care from God sometimes. Many are afraid on some level that he will overwhelm us, judge us, try to control us. God wants us to know on an experiential level. That means not just in our intellect, our experience how available, strong, and gentle he is to his children. And let me mention to you, this is page 43, that there are word pictures all through the Bible, Old Testament and New, of how God wants us, how God likens his tender care for us. So we've everybody knows that, you know, we pray our father. But there's also scripture where God is compared to a mother. So if you had a gentle mother, Maybe focusing on those scriptures, the mothering tenderness of God would work better for you. Some samples of those are Isaiah 49, 15 and Isaiah 66, 13. Also, there are places where God compares himself to a brother, to a friend. So the type of relationship that God invites us into, I'm reading again, is healing and transformational. This type of connection goes beyond the information level of what we believe in a religious sense. We could never earn that kind of connection to God. So I'm going to guide you in a prayer to help remove some of the distortions. And um, I would invite you to repeat this yourself. In the name of Jesus, I come out of agreement with the lies that I'm not good enough that I'm not worthy of love, that I do not belong. In the name of Jesus, I renounce any vows I might have made that I will not trust, I will not feel, 
I will never allow myself to be hurt again. When we make those vows, we close off parts of ourselves. Thank you, Lord, that you set me free from wrong beliefs and harmful vows. Help me from now on to fill my heart and mind with your truth and your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So those were some thoughts and some pages from my book, Correcting Distortions in Your View of God. And I bless you to enjoy a deeper sense, experiential sense of God's love, his tender care, and his positive interest in you. I hope you can have a happy Father's Day. Talk to you next time.